Hello, salut, welcome and thanks to coming to our session securing the supply chain with six store artifact signatures at scale. I'm Dmitry Savintsov, an engineer at Yahoo Security Team working on the company-wide security infrastructure. Uh, I'm Yonghe, I also work for the Yahoo Security Team. Our security team is known as the Paranoids and at the top of the slices or uh, logo. Uh, we are very excited to be here. The topic we are going to talk about is something that concerns all the Kubernetes users. Kubernetes has lots of moving parts and infrastructure, but in the end it's about parts running containers that do the useful work, and these containers are started off OCI or Docker images. The big question is, how do we know how can we be sure and how to verify that those images are really the ones that we intend to run and not some malicious falsification? And also, how to do such verification for all of possibly millions of images we are deploying? In this talk, we want to share what we have done trying to answer those questions. And here's the agenda. Supply chain security is about tracing the things we use from their origin and throughout their existence. It may be best to illustrate the dangers and risks with a couple of horror stories, how things can go terribly wrong in this area. Supply chain security concerns not only software. A literally deadly example is the case with Tylenol poisonings when the capsules laced with cyanide were placed on the store shelves. As a reaction to this, the company Johnson & Johnson introduced tamper-evident packaging for all its over-the-counter medications, and they were able to overcome the crisis and win back the user's trust. In the software area, the SolarWinds attack isn't famous. Hackers compromised the software update mechanism and newer versions of the popular Orion network management software brought malicious code to government agencies and major corporations. One more example of the code cough incident. Intruders were able to modify the bash uploader script, and that resulted in compromise of code and credentials of code cough users in their CI setup, and that went undetected for a couple of months. The software supply chain attacks exploit the time gap between the generation of software artifact and its usage. The generation can be, for example, an OCI image built in a CI pipeline, which is then stored in a registry, potentially for a very long time, and its consumption would be deployment in the Kubernetes clusters. This time, the intermediate time of storage, can be between seconds and multiple years. And there is a non-zero risk of modification of malicious in, uh, sub substitution, intrusion. So the stored artifacts may be modified uh, with uh, some other version. So even if we may consider this risk small, we must do our best to prevent such attacks. Cryptographic digital signatures are a classical mitigation for them, so let's explore them in more detail. Typically, the public key cryptography is used for digital signatures. You sign the artifact with the, public, with the private key and verify using the public one. You need to provide the public key to all the points where the signatures are verified, for example, to all the Kubernetes clusters. And critically important, you need to ensure that the private key is never, ever compromised. Otherwise, attackers can use the stolen key to sign maliciously falsified artifacts, and those signatures will be as good as the real ones. The private key management is a hard problem, especially when you need to use it at large scale. Before we talk about what we have done with digital signatures and OCI images, a few words about our world and our environment. At Yahoo, we have several thousand developers, over 60,000 daily builds, more than 700 Kubernetes clusters, and over 100,000 pods. And about half of them are getting deployed or redeployed every 24 hours, and every deployment is a verification event. We are using different pu public cloud providers, AWS and GCP, plus have on-premise clusters. 
The OCI images are produced by Docker, Podman, and Builder, each of which has some differences in the way they sign the images. Our build system is Screwdriver, uh, which is a CI CD platform built and open sourced by Yahoo. But we also have some sprinkles of Jenkins and GitHub actions. There are lots of different software artifacts produced and used, but like in our project, we want to concentrate here primarily on the digital signatures of the OCI or Docker images. We did have an existing image signing system, but it was far from ideal. It used public-private key signing and verification, but depending on a long-lived static PGP key. Even with the maximal security around it, having such an Uber key is not the best for security and also makes it difficult to rotate or revoke. Also, we have a big custom database and an API server to accept, store, and provide on request those signatures, almost a custom registry for image signatures, plus some custom tooling to make it all work. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you have similar setups at your workplaces. It works, but has security deficiencies, is cumbersome and far from ideal. So we started to look for alternatives and industry best practices. We have found the Sixto project, also through CNCF security contacts. The Sixto is a project specifically focused on digital signatures and their verifications. It's an open source supported by the Open Source Security Foundation. It's vendor neutral, works with different clouds, and is widely accepted in the industry. Sixto stands out for its innovative use of ephemeral keys, enabling so-called keyless signing. We chose to use this new technique because it helped to solve the security gaps and reduce the operational cost of our existing signing system. First, instead of signing all images with one static key, this method enables to sign each image with a unique ephemeral private key, so there are no key rotations or revocations necessary. Second, there are no need for a dedicated database to store signatures anymore because they are saved directly in the registry. And finally, we can use uh, widely accepted battle-tested tools supported by a large community with all the benefits of the open source. I'll hand over to Yonga to explain the killer signing and what we have done with it in more detail. Thanks, Dimitri. So how does killer signing work? It is not hard to be understood. Actually, it just involves five different entities. Signer, OCI registry, OIDC provider, certificate authority, and timestamp authority. Let's say you are the signer Alice and you have an image in the OCI registry. To start signing, you need something called OIDC ID token. This token basically, basically proves that you are Alice. Getting this token may involve different steps depending on the OIDC provider you are using. It might ask you for your username and password or require you to use multi-factor authentication. But no matter what, once you go through this process, you will have the OIDC ID token in your hand. The next step is to generate a key pair locally. Then you send the certificate signing request with public key along with the OIDC ID token to the certificate authority. In return, you receive an image signing certificate. This certificate not only proves that you, Alice, possess the corresponding key pair, but also has a short validity. There's no standard regarding the length of the validity, validity period. Typically, the shorter, the better. To be, specific, to be specific in this presentation, let's assume it is uh, 15 minutes. And you have to sign the image right away within this time frame, because all, image, all signatures generated after this 15 minutes will be considered invalid. This is a great security improvement because even if an attacker, even if an attacker somehow got your private key, it doesn't have too much time to do anything bad. And after this step, we no longer need this private key. We can safely discard it. 
This is why this whole process is called keyless signing. It doesn't mean signing without private keys. It means signing with short-lived private keys, and you do not need to, need to worry about key measurements. And now you might be wondering, how do we know when the signature was generated? Like, why do we know the signature was generated while the cert was still valid? Well, that is achieved by the timestamp authority. We send the signature to the timestamp authority, and in return, it provides your cryptographically signed timestamp. This timestamp directly proves that this signature existed at the current time t. This plays a crucial role during the verification process because only with this timestamp can we know when the signature was generated. If we find the generation time t is outside the certificate validity, it should not accept the signature. Okay, now you are holding three things on your hand. First is image signing t, uh, signing third, and the signature, and the timestamp. Finally, what you need to do is to wrap the three things into a new image and upload it to the OSI registry. This is how six stores saves signatures to OCI registries. I know it looks big on the slides, but actually it's just a hundred of bytes, which is small. Also, the signature image is tagged following a naming convention so that the verifier can easily link between an image and this uh, signature image. During the verification process, apart from the image that got signed, and its signature image, we also need two certificate chains. The first one is called Certificate Authority CA Cert Chain. It is a chain that starts from the email that say that issue the uh, image signing cert all the way up to the trusted root CA. It helps us verify if the uh, image signing cert is trusted. Similarly, we also need the timestamp authority TSA search chain, which is used to verify the timestamp. If everything checks out, we can confirm that the image was actually signed by Alice when the search was still valid. However, there are cases where verification might fail. For example, if we only accept the images signed by Bob, but not Alice, it will be considered a failure. Or, if we find the image was signed when the cert was expired, verification would fail too. We will have a demo about those cases later, but regardless of success or failure, this is how key signing and verification work. It provides us with enhanced security. Let's go back to this diagram. So if you want to set up a private keyless signing system, you just need to figure out who is going to be your signer, OCI registry, or IDC provider, CA, and TSA. In the standard setup, of course, the signer is cosign and for sure serves as certificate authority, and either record or temp, a T, a six door TSA acts as timestamp authority. However, you are not limited to those options. Think of this architecture like uh, Lego building blocks. You can swap out any components according to your needs and preference. For example, at Yahoo, we have our established authentication system, Essence, which is a CNCF sandbox project. You can check it out on the GitHub. Uh, Essence can be both OIDC provider and, and CA. And Screwdriver is our signer Alice in the picture. As Dimitri mentioned, it is our CI system and producer of OCI images. Like Essence, it is also open source and you can find it on the CNCI Cloud Native Landscape website. Uh, and yes, we run cosine on the uh, screwdriver. 
The only missing part for us is uh, uh, the timestamp authority. So we launched the six store TSA internally. Compared to Raycore, which contains MySQL, Redis, and web services, six store TSA is a much simpler stateless service. It allows us to launch the internal skillless signing system at the lowest cost. But Raycore as a transparency log indeed provides us more security features, so we are considering adding it into our system in the future. For the verifica verification, of course, you can use the command line tool, cosine verify. But in terms of signature verification in Kubernetes, which is more common, we can utilize the admission webhook. It allows you to intercept and check in the images before they are deployed. As far as we know, you can use a six-door policy controller and Caverno to check the cosine signature. They are all open sourced. But we, for now, wrote our own admission controller to support the legacy signature check. Once we face out the legacy signing mechanism in our company, we will explore switching to one of those uh, open source options. Great, now we have some screenshots to demonstrate what we have discussed actually works at Yahoo. But before we start, uh, just a reminder, we have sanitized all sensitive data for security purpose. Okay, let's get started. What you can see now is our CI system. Screwdriver is signing an image. Firstly, it uses a command CTSID token to generate the OIDC ID token from Essence. Secondly, after, getting, uh, after generating key pair locally using OpenSSL, we use the CTS service cert command to get the image signing cert from Essence. This certificate is valid for only 15 minutes. The third validity here seems to be 75 minutes, but it is because Essence sets the start time one hour before the current time as a margin of safety against potential clock skew. The actual, the actual not before time should be one hour later aligned with the current time, which is 15 minutes before the certificate got expired. Finally, we sign the image, request a timestamp, and push the signature image to the registry. And we can successfully sign this, uh, successfully verify the signature. However, if you only accept the image signed by Bob but not Alice, the verification would fail. The error message goes none of the expected identities matched what was in the certificate. The last case is when someone signed the image after the image signing cert has expired. Even though you can successfully sign the image and push the signature to the registry, you cannot get a timestamp within the cert validity. That leads to a failure verification. The expiration time of, of certificate is before the time that the image was signed. Okay, that's uh, the demo. I will hand over back to Dimitri. So where are we currently in our six store adventure? We have now integrated cosine signatures into the Docker sign step of our CI which this step is used for building all the Docker images, and we are currently do, doing bucketed rollout. One thing that we have to be careful and do is coordinated with the Docker registry ops team regarding the load monitoring, because doing cosign signatures approximately doubles the number of API requests for every generated image. We now produce and upload two images where previously it was just one. We are running the TSA service in AWS, and since the TSA does its own digital signatures, 
it needs its own private key. So we use a multi-region KMS key, and the TSA certificate is signed by Athens, our central certificate authority, so everything gets rooted in Athens. We have contributed a feature to the six store Cosign GitHub project to allow MTLS connections from Cosign, so from CI to the TSA, which was a must-have requirement for us. We have also integrated the six store signature verification in all the Kubernetes deployments, so it's 100% using an admission controller webhook. Similarly to the signing code, it's implemented in Go based on the six store Cosign library. We use a custom webhook, as, uh, as I said, since we need to do several security-related checks. But there is a similar open-source six-store policy control webhook that Jonga mentioned and had a link in his previous slides. In the current transition phase, we do both the legacy and Cassign signature verification. As we said before, the six-store verification has less operational overhead, so there is no additional signature store or custom verification extension required. And we are really looking forward to the day when we can fully switch to the six-store verification. The best thing is that we get a security improvement, but our developers and DevOps do not have to do anything extra. The process is fully transparent to them. There is a saying, security is always inconvenience, but in this case, there is no in inconvenience or extra work for our users. I love the title of the previous talk, safety or security, why not both? Why not both? So it's the same case. We proved both security along with usability, which we absolutely love and strive for. It's like having your cake and eating it too. We have published a blog post about implementing six store image signing. Please check it out for additional details and code examples, especially if you plan to adopt six store at your company. It also details, uh, details our contributions in more detail. Yeah. But, so that's what we have done, but now how you can get started with six store and cosign digital signatures. The way, of course, goes through lots of tests and proof of concepts. You can start in minutes using the standard flow and six store public server, Fulcher and Rekor, Cosign, to get the initial feel for how it works and what it does. And then, well, it's a shameless plug, I would recommend to check out this repository we made for our initial testing and also testing some of the contributions. Uh, Cosign keyless in the Dmitry's GitHub repository. It runs keyless signing using the temporary anonymous image registry, TTL.sh, which is great for testing, and also the public TSA server free TSA.org. Once you have this, you can expand in the direction of your requirements and infrastructure. For example, if you, like us, need to run your own TSA and have MTLS collection, you can try this uh, run TSA MTLS .sh script in the same directory. And it needs some parameters configured like for location of your secrets and the URL and the name for TSA, but it shouldn't be too difficult. And finally, you can grow and expand uh, the solution uh, for your requirements and for, uh, to mesh with your infrastructure. And as you grow uh, the solution, don't hesitate to ask questions. You can find us on the Sixto Slack in the private Sixto users channel, and we'll be happy to help if you can. And the next steps, besides finishing out the rollout, we plan to work on adding an internal instance of record to the system to keep the record of all the signatures made. The OCI images were the starting point, but we would also like to sign and verify all the artifacts, such as IPM and Debian packages or install bundles. One challenge there is where to put the signatures. With OCI images, they can be uploaded to the image registry alongside the images they sign. But for other artifacts, some other solution is necessary. And to make the signature verification really user-friendly and transparent for users, it needs to be integrated with the standard tools such as DNF and Podman. Imagine how awesome it would be if you could run Podman pool or 
Podman run, and it would do the six store verification, uh, six store verification, and uh, abort the operation if the verification fails. So uh, please check out this issue six stock assign issue three five two three on the IPM integration, and maybe you could also help to lobby for this or participate or contribute. To summarize, in about a year-long project, we were able to implement the six-store keyless signing and verification of the OCI images produced in the CI and consumed in Kubernetes. We found the six-store being flexible enough and powerful uh, and meeting our requirements and able to mesh together with the internal components, namely Athens, which is our OIDC identity provider and central certificate authority. We complemented a few bits and pieces that we required with our contributions to the SIGSTOP project. Based on the standard use cases and documentation, it's easy to think of SIGSTOP as being a monolith, where all the pieces, full to record, cosine, I must have. Our experience highlights an alternative approach to SIGSTOP as a set of Lego-like building blocks that can be mixed and matched as needed and combined with the internal pieces, such as identity provider or public key infrastructure. We would like to encourage other companies, even the big ones, to consider adopting SIGSTOP to improve the software supply chain security. If you remember just one thing from this talk, please remember to always sign and verify all your OCI images and, if possible, other artifacts as well. We would like to thank many people who really helped us with this project and the people in the Sixto project. The Sixto community was greatly helpful and a pleasure to work with. Particularly, thank you, Hayden, Nathan, Zachary, and everyone who reviewed our pull request and answers our many questions. We're also grateful to our teammates at Yahoo listed here for their support, advice, and encouragement. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> We have a few minutes left, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. And also, please scan the QR code and leave feedback for this session. There are a couple of microphones in here. Yeah. Go ahead. So the question is why we haven't used the transparency lock of record and uh, what about the benefits it, it provides, right? Um, so we wanted to start somewhere. The record is great. It's append-only lock, so it shows uh, and it, it cannot be modified. Um, we think that record is especially important when you have uh, multiple patches that patches like uh, that are not necessarily trust each other, like an open source world. So it might be less applicable inside of uh, one corporation. But I, we, I know we, th we plan to adopt RACA, so we will, we will be adding this to the mix. So we just we start in with, the, with the pieces that we have, the TSA assertions and, and, and the, our certificate authority. So it's kind of the eating elephant piece by piece, so starting with uh, some piece and then adding and expanding this. I think for ECHO, so one thing, for example, that you need to check if it supports the MTLS connection from cosine to ECHO, so possibly that it would also need to be extended. So we're, we're going to look into this next. And, uh, to add on that, uh, is just record is not uh, required block for keyless signing. The timestamp authority is. And the record is uh, what you can do is to add this at a, as a security enhancement to uh, add after everything is set up. And I know six-door uh, official block has a 
blog on maybe uh, last year about this, writing about, yeah, you can have a time stamp authority stand alone and push those, those entire record like timestamp and every other information to the record again. So without record doesn't uh, means you cannot have keyless signing, but without timestamp authority, it can uh, totally destroy the whole system. Other questions? Maybe one more? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this is the same, quite the same issue, but it, it might overlap. Um, are you, have you thought about um, audit logging for the CA that's issuing that short-lived um, certificate to the actor that's actually doing the signature. I know that when we do uh, CA certificate issuance more generally in like the web PKI, they've done a lot of work for like certificate transparency. So you have effectively a immutable audit log of all the certificates that have been issued. Um, does the six door stuff integrate with any type of thing like that? So I can then see a record of which certificates have been issued to which actors to then go off and do signing. Um, so, uh, so currently we don't have a, like a recollect or append log of all the all the certificates issued by Athens. So Athens, um, Athens is uh, issuing those short-lived. Uh, so the CI uh, VM machine generates its private key, and then it sends a request to the Athens so that it would issue the, the short-lived certificate. And the, it's uh, also tied to the specific, like a screwdriver, specific build project. So, uh, and uh, also access this, you cannot just, ju like from developer station, I, I could not uh, connect to the Athens and get a signing certificate. Y Yonga had to do like uh, some, uh, actually run it in screwdriver so that he would be able to, to do this, uh, this, this screenshot. So it's tightly controlled, but we currently don't have this append lock of all the certificates issued. So this could be something that we, can can, we can consider. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I Last question. <laughs> okay. Oh, Good. you had to run into. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks very much for sharing your experience. Um, you said, th uh, so the, the part that makes the keyless signing work is basically that you're delegating the identity, identity verification to your IDAC provider. Um, can you share how you do th that in your pipelines? I think you br walked briefly through that in the demo. Oh, yes. Uh, your question is how do we get the OIDS token from Athens, right? This step? Yeah, basically, uh, how, how do you. Uh, how do, how do you identify this specific pipeline that it actually has the permission to sign? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think it's more would be more of Athens uh, kind of question, but there is a bit of magic or set up so that when the CI build is started, uh, there's a, like a private, private key or the key identifying this build is placed so that it can identify it itself to the Athens. The, the same way as the, like the VMs in AWS or GCP when they are started, there is also uh, I would say magic, but there's a mechanism that allows it to get a private key and uh, like an assertion uh, that, that also that you know, enables this authentication. Yeah, so, so. yeah, you can see this is uh, command line two we are using, and you can see we have ser service third file and service key file. Yeah, this is uh, how we use to get all ideas to token or prove uh, am Alice to Athens. So is this part of screwdriver or part of your general uh, infrastructure? I think it, it's the part of the screwdriver hooked with Athens so that like on BIOS the, on BIOS the VM received a piece of the identity that it can present for those transactions. So yeah. thanks very much. So if you have a blog post on that as well, that would be nice. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll talk to our Athens colleagues. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for your time and have a great uh, the rest of the conference. Thanks.